What makes virtual work easier or harder on you? And it's all in the fine details. Join a conversation with me and Diana. We're going to unpack all those details to help you guys out. Okay, if we start with the big picture, um, COVID certainly accelerated things a lot. But I mean, people have been working in remote teams for ages now. But what was so uh, interesting and what made such a shift in paradigm was that it happened to everybody at the same time. Uh, and so a lot of people had to learn by mistakes and from in 48 hours um, start leading or achieving results with people who are in remote mode but not were only it's not that they're only in remote mode but they're also isolated they were socially isolated and i think that added an extra dimension uh, and an extra challenge um but basically we can say that that uh, everything seems to point at uh, certain key factors if you don't know the first thing about leading teams and achieving results with and through others uh, that are not with you physically, with whom you exchange, you have no physical context, um, and you haven't had the chance to learn from your mistakes or even read the, a manual, you tend to make certain mistakes, and all these mistakes were made, and it seems that surveys um, also have, have proven that. First, we give less feedback. Two, our conversations tend to be very operational. Uh, three, the lack of context means that there's no, em well, less emotional texture. Um, and, and four, it means that you have to plan an awful lot more. Things that uh, when you're in the physical context, you don't plan because it's part of the context, like meeting somebody uh, in the corridor and saying, hey, uh, Vince, now that I see you, I wanted to share an idea with you, see what you think. I have this technical problem I wanted to know about. Uh, well, this doesn't happen. These sort of casual meetings that you have where apparently, according to surveys, well, and, and according to research, um, you know, 50% of our decisions are actually mm, uh, start outside the meeting rooms. Mm. Um, whereas when you're online, it's, it's not the same. Uh, that means that your your meetings tend to be uh, have to be have to be more focused and uh, uh, and have to be very disciplined. And for some people, it also means that they are absolutely devoid with the, the that that same uh, let's say um, uh, a context that of also offers you connection and rapport with other human beings. That's it, basically. So those are the, the key mistakes that were made. Um, and it, it also means that um, if you are going to be uh, leading in a virtual team and a virtual world in a, in a remote context, there are some best practices that you really should follow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's there's also I don't know what you think about um, if you can maybe expand. Uh, I'm going to add something and see and mm -hmm. see what, what you think. Um, it's like overnight everybody switched to a different medium without fully understanding what it meant. So if you take anybody off the street and you bring him like a, a studio and put him in front of a camera, turn the lights on and go like. You're alive, and now you're going to read the news. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's, it's risky, right? But somehow, it's like a social experiment. It's like everybody got switched overnight to say, like, as, you know, let's say you're managing a team or you're working with colleagues. It's like, well, overnight, it's not an office anymore. You're now in a studio, your own studio. Mm -hmm. You got a camera. You got a mic. And mm -hmm. uh, have fun. Enjoy, kids. Yes. So it, it, it I, get on with it. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. And um, one could say, right, on one side, uh, it's things, it's the best way for things to go horribly wrong, for mm -hmm. one. And it's the best way to uh, grow and develop and accelerate at incredible and impossible pace. You would have, it would have been impossible 10 years ago to say, social experiment, the whole planet Earth will function virtually. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. 
like overnight, you're gonna go like that's that's a, that's a nice movie. Um, that's a cool movie. It's like no 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 mm -hmm. no. We're, it's and that it happened, and we're post that experiment, and now we're the result of this experiment. Um, so it's incredibly positive, but it's also it was. It was disastrous at the same time because there's been severe consequences, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and we've we've known them all like uh, you know depression, lack of meaning, and a lot of those things could have been avoided um, if we had followed some basic ground rules. And I'm I'm just gonna stop there because I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into my rules. And I don't want to do that, but I just want to you know get your perspective <laughs> on this one. Well, I mean, we've seen that, you know, the, the, this phenomenon, this, this phenomenon, which is called the Great Resignation, huh? mm -hmm, yeah. that's happened after two years. Um, and, uh, well, if you like, I'll, I'll tell you, because it, I think it, it's uh, more effective to give some examples and do a little bit of storytelling. As I've been giving a lot of coaching to people in this situation, I'll give you two different stories, two real people and completely different outcomes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, one team manager of a, of a firm in their, their, their financial department, who overnight, of course, had to go um, uh, virtual with the added, with the added, well, the, with, with that added context that everybody is in isolation, working from home uh, very suddenly. You have to, um, uh, you have to train yourself. You have to uh, get used to a different discipline. You got to figure yeah. out what to, how to manage all that mess. So it's like, you know. Yes. And here I am in the middle of the kitchen with the kids and all this. And, 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 um, uh, and, and this manager, she made all the possible mistakes she could have made and she admitted it. She says, this is really not working. And, uh, and she says, and I don't really understand why, because I'm a, I'm a extremely positive and energetic person. And because the team, uh, my team had been, had, was always really very competent you know very very integrated we've been working together for several years uh we always did a good job you know i had no worry whatsoever so you know i i would say to them i'd, I'd contact them and say uh not to worry we'll get through this this is going to be okay um we're very good at our jobs you know i would sort of be upbeat uh, motivate them be chatty be positive call them up and th their, let's say, their mood got went worse to worse to worse to worse, you know? Um, and I couldn't understand why this was happening. Um, and, and, and of course, what the problem was that people not only need caring, um, they need structure, you know? Um, and a lot of the structure that we have when we're working together is already there. It's there. It's part, it's the ergonomy, as they say, of where we work no? um, and, and you can be as caring as you like, you can motivate, you can uh, keep the communication flowing. But if you don't give the structure that that situation needs, information doesn't flow. There are misunderstandings. Uh, people ruffle each other's feathers. Um, of course, when you have connectivity issues, as well everything seems to be to get very uphill and so she realizes after a few months that the problem was and then she thought that well we know of processes we're extremely structured we're extremely organized people you know we work in an accounting and a financial department for goodness sake we can do this this is not you no know, structure and organization is not going to be our problem and that was the problem because she didn't give any um, she, she realized that she didn't give the right structure, the right guidelines, the right control processes. Um, uh, and, and people need to know exactly what level of autonomy they have. They need to, to, to know when we're going to meet. They need to know what do we have to report. They need to know, but they need to know, well, who do I speak to? Can I take decisions without consulting and just let you know? Or do I have to ask first? You know, the things that seem really obvious that if you don't actually make them explicit, they might not happen. So that is one story. And so she finds herself, despite being very upbeat, showing concern, you know, focus on integrating the team, making them as you know, she read this little manual that says you have to make your team uh, uh, not 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 just connect isolation, but create a virtual community. So she was all focused on that, but it all went sort of uh, a bit wrong, no? Mm -hmm. 
and, and we, she had to reposition. We've, yeah. we've seen a lot of that, um, and I've lived that firsthand. Where the issues were misunderstood, the problem was mm. misunderstood. It's like, oh, we're all, all isolated. It's like, well, are we really, mm -hmm. or are we in the same mm. way, you know, isolated? Um, you know, uh, in my particular situation with with the family at home, it was a struggle to um, like most people with kids and or grandparents, you know, uh, you know, just to manage the health and the well-being of people at home, as well as mm -hmm. fulfill, you know, the requirements of a job um, for other people who were truly physically alone at home. It was like there was a sense of loneliness. It's like, no, 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 I don't feel alone. I feel squeezed. I don't have a living space. I wish I was alone. And then the other person was alone. It's like, I wish I was surrounded with people. It's like, we're, so it's, so if, if you're, uh, let's say a manager and you're, you're, you're thinking, it's like, oh, everybody feels lonely. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's well, there's the a difference between, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Because it's different being alone than feeling lonely. Mm -hmm. No? Mm. Um and for some people, they, you know, I need to be alone. I need a sense of intimacy. Huh? And but it, it's true. Being alone is not the same as being lonely. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, no, exactly. You can be lonely even if you're surrounded with people. Yeah. So if when, uh -huh. when, you, when you come in with the uh, was... fuzzy wuzzy approach to say, like, I'm going to make them feel great and they don't feel yeah. well. And it just comes in, you know, too much sugar kills the sugar. You know? So it, it just comes in. Um, cringy you know it's like uh all right let's have a meet if well, we're a good meeting it's like really is that what we need yes if it doesn't feel absolutely authentic it can produce the opposite effect yeah. uh, but the real thing is that, that they needed some structure they needed some planning they needed to to reinvent the processes that they worked with and when she she cottoned on to that that she, we can't just take into virtual mode exactly the same way we worked before uh, and, and think it's just going to work and things will just sort themselves out, you know. Um, and so, well, no, they, they finally got it right. But it was because she said, hey, well, hang on a minute. Let's happen. Ha what's happening? So she, you know, she, she, she had one to one conversations and she found out things that she didn't even suspect, you know. Um, no, because I'm not happy because uh, um, I, I don't have a clear idea of, of in, in this, you know, why are we doing this process this way? Why can't we change it this way? Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, you know, go, coordinate my work with uh, Sergey or, 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 or with uh, Kamran and uh, things are, are not happening. We have misunderstandings. Um, I was sure I said this and he understood this, uh, you know, the absence of context um, was, was there. So, that, you know, one of the things that you do when you create a virtual team is that you have to invent the context. Mm. You have to invent in precise context. And very often it's not a sexy word, as I said more than once, you know, the word process. But, uh, you know, you can be all as caring as you like, but if you don't have clear structure and clear process, people feel a bit lost, you know. Uh, and it's important to get them to also say what processes they need to fix and tweak. Okay, so that that was one story. And then I had a completely reverse, completely different story. Uh, and I remember it was just um, a few days after the, 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 the shutdown. I got a call from uh, a person who's who just been promoted to general manager of that company in Spain. And. He'd just been promoted. He was just getting to know his management team. And then all of a sudden, everybody went home. You know, It was the, the same day that he got promoted. Um, and, um, and he was having to define a new strategy. Business was not going very well. They expected him to sort of bring the business up um, over the next six months. He had loads of challenges. And on top of that, you know that happened you know and and it and it, uh, amazingly it worked he made it work extremely well um he saw the positive side he says what i'm finding amazing is that there are people that i knew because i was their colleagues just a few weeks ago uh, it, we had we 
good relationships, we get on well, but I knew, I realized how little I really knew as, of them as people. Yeah. And just, and, and I insisted as a, as a manager that I said, hey, what about us? We're not gonna use any of these virtual backgrounds, okay? I'm gonna let you see my kitchen, my house, okay? And my kids, how about we all do the same? Um, uh, he wanted, because uh, he's an extremely structured individual, very, you know, super planner and all that. And he says that just by, by actually sharing the domesticity of the situation, it created links and they felt they were really together fighting against something that, and they had to bring that business up. You know, they had to bring it up. And I, and, and I was just speaking to him the other day and they've had an, um, they had an amazing year. Uh, um, and he, he, what he said is that in times of crisis, when you're working at a distance, um, you have to ha keep one eye on the quick wins. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be obsessed with, you know, future great visions because things are so fluid, so changing. Yeah. Keep your eye on the ball, but you have to keep your eye on the next wave and being adjusting your strategy all the time mm. um, and, and reinventing process, reinventing structure. Uh, being extremely, extremely agile, commuting ver communicating very effectively. He did. A, he's well. He's doing a fantastic job. Uh, but it's a completely different story. And both of them doing as best they could with the information they could. You know, the the, the at what they thought was the right thing at the time at, at, at that time. And sometimes you get the result that you want. Sometimes you get the result that you didn't. Oh. And it's the it's the minute details which mm -hmm. make a complete shift in how things can go virtually the same way like um i think most people are hyper critical when it comes to things they like or don't like i think most people mm -hmm. don't admit how critical they could be about something because it could come off as negative or anything but you know when, when you're kind of scrolling to your to your spotify or netflix or whatever channel or <laughs> your, it's like Crap, crap, crap. I like that. Crap, crap, crap. I like that. And then you build your playlist, right? But mm -hmm. we're overnight. I'm, I, and, and I always use the metaphor. You're in a studio. Like I'm in a studio right here. So overnight, we we had to become the people who did not understand that are the ones failing. The ones succeeding understand that when you come into the office in real life, what you're showing as a person, clean, sh this is not clean shaven, but whatever, whatever you look like, sound like, even smell like, and that's a disturbing subject, but that's a different thing. Um, it, it just changes how people interact with each other. And then overnight, it became, and I'm touching my screen here, it's overnight, it becomes like a two dimensional reality. And I, I, I kind of uh, messed up my camera, obviously, but uh, it, so this two dimensional reality reality will define the success of the interaction so it's like you got to be and so people went crazy over the background they figure like there's no way i'm gonna show like and this is not a mess like it took me 20 minutes to clean this up by the way so and the mess is on the other side but i still want this to be kind of kind of presentable so my real person like at work i'm super organized but in real life it's a struggle to organize anything outside of work. And that's why my wife is there. <laughs> so uh, but you shouldn't be saying that, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she's there organizing, you know, a lot of things. So, um, so this is where we complete each other. So it, it's, it, it, people thought it's like, so if everything is super important to the screen, I'm going to make it, I'm going to convey, they thought they had to convey the same standard you would have in an office. It's like, no, 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 no. Let's think backwards and let's figure out like what do people need now that they're quote unquote isolated, you know, or, or they don't have that richness of interaction they could have in real life. Well, what they need now is richness. They, they, they strangely enough, they want to know more about you because they can't mm -hmm. see in 3D. They can't feel you. Mm -hmm. They can't smell you. Um, that's, that's absolutely it. In so fact, they need that. They need all yeah. those things mm -hmm. in the background to figure out, like, oh, that's Vince. You know, mm -hmm. like he likes to snow skate. He's got some weird machine here to print some <laughs> weird stuff. And it's like, and then it becomes mm -hmm. 
something. It becomes something you build mm. on versus having a blank, uh, you know, like you're in an aquarium, you're on the beach, you're in a, a Starbucks coffee. It's like, it's so dry mm. that yes. it, it's conveying a message like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show you who I am, you know? Mm -hmm. That is it. I'm not why, you know, I'm not sh showing you really who I am. Uh -huh. mm. That's it. And um, um, so now if, if we go into virtual teams without COVID, that's another thing, you know, um, uh, you're dealing with people who, who you're working with people in remote mode who don't have that added angst. And, you know, anxiety, um, fear, huh? mm. um, and, uh, you know, that, that, that sense of displacement that we've all had at some yeah. stage or other, you know, when... And, and for when, the sake uh, of the discussion, I really want us to stick to removing yeah. any pandemic out of the yeah. equation mm -hmm. and going like, what used to work for virtual still works for virtual. But um, mm -hmm. I was lucky enough personally to have worked virtual in, in the past... 10, 12 years, like essentially virtual, very little mm -hmm. local that I've, I've built those tricks. And I'm um, at this point in, in our, our, our talk, I think uh, I just want to lay the first trick out and see, see what you think. And then we can, again, play some jazz. Um, the trick I found, um, it's, it's not, it's a, it's a method. Uh, I don't say trick. It's like, I don't want to trick people into something, but the, 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 the method mm -hmm. I found is that Um, I try to show as much as possible both my hands while I'm going virtual, you know, as much as possible, like not in an awkward fashion, but I'm one, I, I, I used to not do it. And then strangely enough, the hands gravitate to the mouse, they get to the keyboard and then you hear a bling and you go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they know you're kind of not there and, but everybody's being polite about it, but they know that you're not listening anymore. So I'm forcing myself to focus, pay attention. And I'm showing that, listen, my hands are here. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else that's happening. I'm a hundred percent, uh, present, you know, mentally I'm listening. And that's the only thing I'm doing right now. And, and people won't realize, but it, it's, it's creating, I don't want to use the word connection. But it's one to show respect, but it's it's creating that sense of attention that people require when when they're virtual. Because when you're in real, you know when the person's not listening, and you can call them out on it. But in a majority, a sad majority of most virtual calls happen kind of here. So you see. Well, not only that, if top, and, and, and 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 I've. This is one of the things that, that I've done many a course about simply explaining people if they want to influence, if there are certain rules of the game that you understand when we're face to face, they're still the same, exactly the same uh, when you go remote. So uh, why is it if you understand when you're, let's say, when you're in a where you're in a discussion or where you're trying to negotiate or you're trying to resolve a conflict, you know that it's important from a psychological uh, standpoint that you see each other's hands. Hands are, uh, you know, a game changer. And we know that we know that depending on where they are, okay, um, they can make you seem relaxed. They can make you see tense. They can make you seem more dramatic or more emotional, you know, yeah, whether yeah. your hands they're go weapons. up or go down. They're weapons. They're, they're weapons yeah. that, yes. If you show your palms, um, you know, they can make you, uh, you know, pr project uh, yourself as someone who wants to understand, who's empathetic. And instead of that, what we've done is we, we've become sort of talking heads. And so I've seen how many, how many people connected in meetings have you seen like this, you know? Yep. Oh, geez. Yeah, that's a view. Right. That, that's... <laughs> 2020, 2021. Yeah, that's uh, talking heads. And, I, and to say, look, if you should occupy, it's, it's small enough as it is. How are you going to influence uh, somebody or, or, or empathize with somebody or get them to talk to you um, if you're just a teeny little talking head and you've only got, you've only got a tiny little space and on top of it, your, your digitalized you is flat. Mm -hmm. 
and you don't occupy all the space possible. There's no point in having loads of space on top of your head, for example. So all these scenes that seem like ridiculous little details are absolutely vital. What you just said about hands, super important. And another thing, another thing that I've noticed that you do is that your the angle at which you sit, you're not completely 100% like that. So um, people need to see you slightly asymmetrical, not symmetrical like this, mm. you know, but slightly asymmetrical. Uh -huh. mm. It gives a different, uh, a, a, a different perception. You look more relaxed. You look more human, basically. <laughs> no? yeah. it, it, mm -hmm. it creates a, and that's my second trick. My second trick is the angle. And, and, and this is like hours of, <laughs> it's hours of YouTubing and trying to figure out like what works, what doesn't work. But also it's, um, uh, I, I'm going to say something is totally weird. So brace yourself, right? So I brace I, myself. <laughs> I, I kind of discovered that um, um, while uh, I found out this article about this super amazing dog trainer. I don't know if it was Hector or whatever that, that gentleman's name is in the U.S. Very famous uh, person. Oh, yes. The, the dog whisperer or something. You yeah, know. whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and so I found out this article that, that the trick... Uh, and don't quote me on it, but the, the trick to um, allow a, a dog to get familiar with you and not be scared of you at the first meeting is never to face him front because there's um, it's very confronting, right? And, and, and you have to show yourself in the angle which kind of looks like this, non-threatening, and it allows the dog to observe you without observing feeling observed. You, feeling yeah. observed. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're kind mm -hmm. of absorbing who that person is in total safety, you know? So it's like watching somebody, you know, a, a couple of desks away and going like, well, who's that dude? I don't know him. <laughs> so you're, you're kind of watching him. So that's one thing which kind of influenced me to figure like, I can't be facing the camera like that. It doesn't make sense. It's too confrontational. And the second thing is I'm trying to reproduce how I usually speak with people at work. I'm a kind of really laid back person at work. Uh, not all the time, <laughs> but when, when I want to connect, I always use a 45 degree angle. There's a table, right? And well, like this, right? So there's a table. I'm this person is here. I'm here. So mm -hmm. I'm using yes, as you much don't as sit, possible. You don't sit in exactly. You don't sit right in front so of I'm, them. I'm yeah. trying to reproduce the angle we would have if we were sitting with each other. And I make an effort not to look at the camera because one, it is awkward for me. And this is a counterintuitive thing. It's like, I'm glad you're looking at the camera. I'm lucky enough you're looking at the camera. However, if I want to give this angle and then I look like this, that means I can't see you anymore and I have no clue what's going on. So most people like struggle to figure out like, where do I look? And yes, this is a camera which is not on my laptop. It's a separate camera. So I would say to anybody, mm -hmm. invest into a high quality, get the money out high quality piece of camera just put it you know set it up i got a, a rig here set it up find a way to set it up but please do not use your laptop's camera set it on the side get an angle and do not be worried about the fact that when you speak to people they're looking at you from an angle people will appreciate that you know it's different from shooting a webinar. Let's say you're shooting a webinar and then yes, you have to look at the camera because it is not a discussion. It's not a dialogue. It's more you're absorbing something. So yes, you do have to see those eyeballs completely aligned with yours so you can kind of get the message out if you're selling something, right? But um, if you're in a dialogue and you want to connect with people, don't be afraid not to look at the camera. Look at your screen, get an angle. I always set myself not perfectly center. I use the off center. I'm sitting here on purpose mm -hmm. to give some strategic space. So it's like I'm occupying at most two thirds of the screen and I leave a third of space because too, much, yeah. too much of me is like, I'm not going to take a whole thing. It's like, it's a, a way too much of me. So let's a little breathe. <laughs> Enough of Vince. So it, I need some breathing room here. 
so people don't get fed up uh, of looking at me. They can look here, and usually in more informal things, I have, um, you know, uh, things like that, this, and I have my Rubik's Cube, I, you know, you get some stuff around, get some toys around, so mm -hmm. people can, you allow them to get distracted. You have to allow them to get distracted because asking somebody to always look at you, one, it's narcissistic, and two, it is, people will be tired of you. Whereas in real life, if you're sitting next to somebody, you, you, you don't always look at a person in the eyes. It's just freaking awkward, right? So you kind of gaze around and you're in a shop, in a coffee shop, and you're, you're discussing something. So you kind of allow people to free flow, look at everywhere else, kind of look at you. Removing the pressure of absolutely looking at you in the eyes is an amazing thing, and very few people do that. Mm, I, well, actually, I found it a little bit the other way around um, in the sense that in certain what we call, uh, well, I mean, it, it's something that I say ad nauseum, but leadership is practiced through meaningful conversations. OK, uh, a meaningful conversations, a meaningful conversation in a remote mode. Uh, imagine giving feedback or discussing something in a project that didn't go well or trying to get uh someone in your team to open up because you feel that just there's something not right you know that their, their motivation's going down or um, not even necessarily the level of performance that th you just feel that there's a discomfort somewhere you know uh, and you want them to open up and talk about their expectations or at least diagnose if they have some sort of problem with somebody yeah, else the in the team or whatever yeah yeah, yeah the crucial what a meaningful conversation hmm. meaningful conversations in real life meaningful conversations in real physical life you want to be able to look at the person and you want to be able to see their eyes um, i'm not saying that you're you know you you're looking in their eyes the whole time but you want to 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 feel that that person is actually looking at you so for example uh, Yes, in, in certain situations, yes, but in other situations where you want to hold the person's attention, I would like my boss to be able to feel that he's engaged with me and he's paying attention to my nonverbal language. Um, and Absolutely. the thing is, is that as, as, you, as, you, as you said, the thing is, is that they will only perceive that if you look sometimes at the camera, whereas you, in order to be able to observe them, you're looking at somewhere else. There's this divorce in, in the angles, you know, it's, yeah. it's really strange. Yeah. So it means that, yeah, the, well, the, the way, yeah, the way it, it's, it's, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. It's the, it's that, that thing that you're playing is that you're, you're, you're looking one direction, but you know, you have to check the camera, you have to check the camera and uh, it's not, you know, you're not, um, um, uh, you're not forcing the person to look in, in, in your eyes, but it does make a real difference. Um, this this at this university where we've conducted some interesting research where people um, who've had uh, you know chats or meetings one-to-one -one one meetings one-to-one -one meetings uh, with their boss one of the key things that they felt sort of off-putting was that they felt that their boss never looked at them you see what I mean mm -hmm. I was I was totally and you're absolutely right. I was really in the virtual team setup, like thinking like big teams, meetings, leading people, but absolutely on one on one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I see this as a checkmate move. So there's you you have to. I I I can't. I'm struggling to say this in English. Um, I tend to go in French. You have to doze like the amount mm -hmm. of times and the timing at which you're going to go like, listen, Brian, mm -hmm. let's make yeah, this work. Exactly. Exactly. And then you, you exactly. kind of go back to something more laid back. So it's, it's just the intensity of mm -hmm. like in real life, the intensity of locking on needs to mm -hmm. be timed and dosed right. But my, my message um, was, because of the technical it's, it's very technical because the camera is integrated on the webcam and nobody went on Amazon to bother to buy something or maybe you have a lousy company mm -hmm. who doesn't pay you a separate webcam you know shame on those companies uh, but it, it's because that by default a majority my only message was the majority of people are locking on to the camera mm -hmm. because 
they see that the camera's here, the screen is there, and their eyes mm -hmm. go from here, there, here, there, here, there, and then mm -hmm. you build this fatigue without knowing it of like not getting focused. So my main message is like by default, don't get bothered by the camera. Set it up in a way that it's it's more conversational, but use it use the angles wisely. So if you feel you need to lock in to create like mm -hmm. some sort of whatever you want to do, <laughs> it can be a pressure point, it can be some draw for attention, it can be showing that you're really there and then mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. go back. So it's instead of going from a laptop thing where your eyes are going up and down, up and down all the time, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. insane. And people see your eyes, and it just creates that schizophrenic feel of he's there, he's not there, he's there, mm -hmm. he's not there. It's just by default, set it in relaxed mode. People will appreciate it. And yes, absolutely. Just lock into the camera when you feel it's right, when you feel... Um, and it takes practice. It takes practice to kind of look at the camera and with the same intensity you would as if it was a real person. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Because when mm -hmm. you look at the camera and if you're not thinking of that person, if you're not visualizing like this is a face, this is somebody here, then you have to kind of be an actor. You have to kind of visualize like that's my buddy Brian <laughs> and say... Brian, seriously, man, yes. what's going on with you? And then kind of go back, you know? And then what I do is I sometimes not even look at my screen. I kind of, and I messed up the camera again. Uh, I, I kind of go like this and go and think through what I'm trying to say. You, you have to be, again, half being half Italian helps, but be very <laughs> mobile, you know, mobile, you know, kind of move yeah, things yeah, yeah. around. Absolutely, yes. Um... What we've been seeing is uh, images were too static, people not well positioned. You can't see their hands. They look like talking heads. The lighting is absolutely awful. Okay, it's not only having a webcam, but it's also uh, using the right light. Um, so, you know, I've been in some meetings where people look positively scary, you know, <laughs> like Boris Karloff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, like Boris Karloff, and she was only 25 years old, you know, <laughs> and she looked like Boris Karloff just because of the lighting. So lighting is important. You do, it, it's it's true, you just said it, you, you become a little bit of an actor. Um, uh, to make it look real, there has to be a mise-en-scene sort of thing. Uh -huh. yeah. um, it's, it's, it's a bit of make believe. Um, no, you have to make yourself believe that, mm -hmm. let's say I'm going to lock in, Diana awesome talking to you like you, you feel you feel like in the uh, a talk show host like this is a show this is a cam there's the camera one camera two and uh, sometimes mm -hmm. um it feels great to see the host maybe on the side view sometimes it's this host so you have to kind mm -hmm. of get familiar and it's just you know not taking anything for granted so if you watch any of those shows now i don't, I don't have cable anymore but um if you watch anything on TV, which sounds, feels like the news, and there's a different sets of camera and the single host, just the message to, I'm sending to everybody, just pay attention to when they switch a camera and why they use that angle and what they're trying mm. to achieve using that angle. So you, ha you kind of, instead of having like several cameras on you, you're the subject switching to the single camera you have and then switching back and then sometimes just allowing yourself to be so you you have to be so conscious of let's say your positioning towards the camera um and i think most people who don't invest in the side camera and use the laptop's camera don't even think about it they, but they can't shift the laptop it just doesn't make sense so i i think that the one thing is again the side camera and i, I want to throw this one out there again um with with the, with the time we have um one trick I've used for virtual team, so moving away from technical stuff and the cameras and all that, um, was planning informal, uh, informality. So uh, a majority of people, sadly enough, I see right now, have gone from, before COVID, right, 
from one hour meetings and two hour meetings to 30 minutes, 30 minutes. And then I'm seeing 15 minutes now. Sprints of 15 minutes uh, followed by sprints of 30 minutes. And then the one hour meetings are like, oh, a grace period for them. It's like, and, and, and now you're seeing those articles pop up to say, you know, book some time, you know, get some zones in your afternoon where you can have breathe, absorb and think. Um, my message it's really just go let's go beyond that when we used to be in a physical space informality was on top of our schedule so we didn't book ourselves every 15 minutes we allowed ourselves to have a hallway discussion and all that so what i do is i plan informality so i plan like an hour free space where i either cool down or I chit chat, talk to one of my guys. I get, hey, what's up? What's going on with you? Yeah, not so good. Oh, all right. You want to talk? Available? Cool. Let's have a chat. So it's not about setting. Yes, we have weeklies and and whatever monthlies and all that. <laughs> but, but it's just planning informality that you have to be like this morning. I will have to be informal. No pressure. If I talk to my guys, I talk to my guys. If I talk to colleagues, I talk to colleagues. I reach out to people. If I don't want to reach out to people, I just want to cool down and read an article from Forbes and McKinsey. That's what's going to happen, you know? Uh, you said you said uh, planned informality. Um, uh, I call it planned improvisation. Yep. Um, and, and what we do know, though, is that in the virtual world, you have to plan three times more. So things that would happen just very spontaneously when you're sharing space, you have to plan because it is true, out of sight, out of mind. So um, what I do, I plan, um, you know, I put it in my agenda. They might not know that and they might be upset if they actually knew that I had planned this um, apparently impromptu improvised meeting because that is real life. That is real life. When I'm working with my team, a lot of things that happen, they're they're improvised. But it, you know, in this world where you're jumping from one meeting to another, before you know it, three months can go by and you haven't had any of those conversations which are extremely meaningful. So I booked them, you know. Uh, I booked them. I said, next week on Thursday, I'm gonna make it so I have an improvised conversation with Carlos, you know, and, and you look for it. Um, and, and you've got and, and it flags you, so I know that. But now is the time to call Carlos up and say, because I know he's not in a course or something. And I'll say, Carlos, how are you? I just needed to, to check base with you. I just had an idea, and I wonder if you have a few minutes to discuss it with me. Or what would you do if, you know, do you have a moment? Um, I just need somebody to sort of hit a ball against, or or to say what they what, what they think about this. What option could we use? So, um, and that is absolutely planned he perceives it as spontaneous yeah and it's it's like having this roller decks if that means anything anymore but having this list of people um that yeah. you want to kind of scroll through as you want to uh, ping pong ideas and and mm -hmm. test things and and um you know it's just yeah i and, and, i think it's planning the unplanned you know Yes. Uh, in fact, the little model that, that I developed was one of the key points was whether it's called the ABCD of, of virtual teams. And the first one is, um, and, and this is probably the most difficult one because the most intangible. How do you get, how do you sustain trust? Mm. All right. It, it's impossible to 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 uh, in difficult times and uncertain times. And this is what people need. People need a zone of safety, safety, and they'll be much more likely to follow somebody who they feel safe with, cognitively safe, emotionally safe, um, you know. Um, so, so how do you how do you sustain trust? Well, anyway, we, we've looked at some things. For example, the presence, how you engage, what you look like, how you speak, how you have eye contact or avoid eye contact, how you set up your scenario. You know, your that is really important. Uh, the frequency of exchanges, how you improv those little improvised conversations, and the next one is. At the end of the day, you're going to have to multiply, com communicate multiplied by three and plan multiplied by three because a communicate multiplied by three is is um, is differentiating very clearly between those exchanges online that are relationship focused 
and those that are, you know, operational focused. And then so, so, so there are three key elements there, which is people, process, and technology. How are you going to get those together to the degree that you want? No. Um, and then, and then planning multiplied by three. I plan so much more than I did before. I think all the things that we do um, that that are just part of our context, that now that context on a way and I have to plan, I have to replace them with specific actions, with specific organization um, uh, 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 tasks, no? Um, I plan a lot more. And it was really funny because after a year, you know, me thinking here that, um, that my team uh, hasn't cottoned on that these improvised conversations are really very planned. They start doing it with me now and they take the mickey out of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're, 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 I mean, you know, they, they see the trend. It's like, well, every Thursday she calls me out of No, nowhere. it's not every Thursday. No, I'm very careful about that. I change the day. No, no. Uh, they're smart people. They're smart people. This, yeah, this morning I got a, uh, you know, a, a WhatsApp message from uh, two, two, two of my teammates. And they were representing, you know, the, the scene of uh, Salome and, uh, you know, Ju no, Judith and Olofernes, you know, where th there's this, well, it's, it, it's part of the um, a mythical uh, Bible figure where Sal no, uh, Judith, she has the, the head of, uh, of um, I think it's uh, John the Baptist cut off. And so she's holding the head in her hand. So they, they, they did this sort of Photoshop where, because we, we don't see each other, you know, where one of my team members is Angel and another one who's Alan. And so he's like Judith and he's holding uh, Angel's uh, head in his hands. And they sent this picture to me. They say, we know you're thinking about us. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and yeah, and and Angel's face was sort of like this, you know. You could only see his as if he was as if Alan was holding up this ball, but instead of the ball, it's it's it's, it's Angel's head, and he's looking up like that, you know, like we're thinking about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. So, and, and and well, I want to want to throw this this one out there as well. Um, um, for me, the, uh, the one of the things that I've I've implemented, um, and the way and people who knows people who know me at work know this but i see like every single not like one-on-ones but like team calls virtual team big team calls like uh, exceeding five six seven eight nine ten people so wh when you're falling into a group so f so when you get a virtual team group uh on a virtual call um i see this as uh, my role whether it's uh leading or not even leading, but you know, co-hosting or just being part of. Um, it has to be my my personal motto is it has to be entertaining to a certain point. It has to be entertaining. So I see this as it has to be interesting. You have to learn something new. There has to be a sense of playfulness in the call. You you have to end like if you want to lead. Um, mm -hmm. and mobilize and influence and if you want people to look forward to I got a call with Vince they they have to, to get some joy out of it even if it's a tough call yes. they, you need to figure out a way that it's fun it's playful they get some joy out of it and yes there's some hard questions there's some hard discussions but ultimately um, you, you you have to convey this sense that you, you're entertaining to a certain point. Yes. So and, and, and it's fighting finding that um, depending on the audience, you can go extremely entertaining and very personal and and let let yourself mm -hmm. loose as if you were in your um, salon in your living room. Uh, mm -hmm. Or if it's if a more conventional, so you have to be very astute or very sensitive to the audience to figure out like let's make this fun and let's figure out what is the fun zone uh, and make let's make sure it's appropriate for the audience and every single audience is different so for mm -hmm. me that's kind of my mission it's like people need to look forward to this call they have to be eager and and i, I could go on and on into how do i how do you make it in training but let's say my first trick 
if I don't know anybody and I know somebody who's got a different nationality than mine, which is the case, I'm half a t I'm a half breed in so many uh, nations, but um, I try to figure out a way to say hello, thank you, goodbye in their language. So whether it's German, whether it's French, Spanish, whatever language, Japanese, I've, I've learned throughout the years, hello, goodbye, thank you, but not like with a weird accent. I practice like crazy to make sure it sounds exactly like it's supposed to sound. So that's how... So you mean for, yeah, for a split second, they're thinking he actually speaks Japanese. <laughs> yeah, they, they go like, uh, you know, arigatou gozaimasu or itadakimasu. You know, it's like just a basic, <laughs> some basic, uh, you know, wonderful presentation. Shibarasu pura zantation. So you, you have to <laughs> use the intonation they use as much as possible. And... Um, and then that's just fun for them. It's like, man, that's that's fun, you know? And so if you, if you kind of, it's an icebreaker. If you break the ice and you got three different types of cultures, languages, nations, or different people from different backgrounds, you kind of connect with them, you know, at that level to say, I'm interested into who you are, your culture. And even if it's the same culture as your own, if they're come from a different part of the city, different part of the country, you kind of connect to the food they're eating, where they live, what school they went to, um, and it just take a couple of minutes in the call, and then you get you get into business, and then if you finish your call early, you can get back to whatever you were discussing when you started. It's like, oh, that great restaurant on the other side of the town. You've been there, yeah, I come from the same city. So it, it's, I think that's one trick, if you don't know the audience, that's just one trick to use um, and it's simple enough. Go on Google, type in, even during the call. If, if you're discovering yes. during the call, I got a Portuguese guy or a Russian guy or a German or Japanese or whoever that person is, just type in goodbye. And just, if you can read it phonetically, try it out and it's going to sound funny, but they're going to laugh and they're going to see like, hey, he's making an effort. That's pretty cool. And very few people try it because we sound awful when we try a new language, but it's, they're going to appreciate the vulnerability you're allowing yourself to get into as, as you're trying to say goodbye in their language. So for me, it's like that's one way for people to remember you and to look forward to the next calls because they're seeing like, well, yeah, I think this guy's really trying to connect with us. And it's not only about work. It's not a transactional virtual meeting. It's something more, you know. Yeah, um, I think that that single that single role which is being a a superb facilitator is 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 what's going to get you by be a good facilitator Pe people need to smile especially in bad times um if you're able to make them smile if you're able to use humor if you're able to show interest if you're able to get everybody say something if you're able to convey that you are 100 percent there you know 100 percent there they'll be the probably heighten the possibility of them being there they, them feeling 100 percent there too yeah yeah they, they want to re re i don't know how to say that reciprocate Is that how you reciprocate yes yeah thank you all right yes. so, so they they, they want to mm -hmm. kind of if you're investing that much into a call like both my hands are here i'm a hundred percent there i've learned your language i know how to say previet you know or top of the morning mm -hmm. or whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> Whatever that would be, they're going like, man, this guy's investing a lot. So, and, and for me, I, I always program, and again, it's, it's been my, my dream as since I was a kid to be a, a talk show host. I always think like if I'm hosting a call, it's a virtual call, I am hosting. And people miss, underestimate what it means. You're hosting. If you're hosting. host and you're inviting people mm -hmm. at your house and it's just dry, there's no drinks, there's no food. There's mm -hmm. no, they don't know where to sit. It's like a horrible so, Yeah, so, we're not going to come back here again if we can help it. So yeah, yeah. Oh, Vince invited us. It's like, oh, I don't know about that. It's like, no, I'm busy. So if people, and what, what I tell my guys, is like, if you're inviting people and they're not showing up, it's not because they're busy. It's because of you. You're not interesting enough. And that, that's a hard hit on the ego, you know, when people don't yeah, show and, up, you know, and if they don't show up and they really want to show up, they always tell you why. I'm sorry, 
I can't be there. I got this urgent thing. Can we reschedule? They still want to see you. But if they never show up, you're not interesting enough. You need to be interesting mm -hmm. host. Yep. And, uh, it, and it's funny because, you know, you were, I, I've just been noticing it because I noticed it from the moment that you mentioned, it's so important to show your hands. And at that moment, my hands were here and I immediately went like this, you know, because we do mirror each other. We mirror each other a lot. And, um, and, and and you can observe it in others you'll observe i don't know how you've observed it but um uh, when you when you're showing your hands do you often observe that the other person the person on the other side of the screen uh, tends to do the same thing so there's, if you if you tend to sit if you tend to sit like this right in front of the of the screen like this people will tend to square themselves as well there's a heightened yeah. interest when I show mm -hmm. my hands, if I really want people to pay attention, I go like this. <laughs> and the reason for that is just the, the movement is so different. So it's a call to action. So when, when I show my hands, I get people listening. When I really want people to stop everything and you want to pause for effect, you, you, you really want to, again, it's, it's, it's really, it's human. We, we mirror what we see. So if you're going like mm -hmm. this, it's like, guys, I don't know how we're going to do this. You know? Everybody's listening. So you, you kind of want to use well, that they, to your they, benefit. They would be listening to you too if we, if this were, if we were all in a room. Yes. Yes. But I'm just saying, it's just putting your hands up. But it, Naturally, they will, they will not do it automatically. Only if you talk about it, you know. It's, it's like it's like if you if you want to mess with somebody's head, you want to, you want to ask them like, how exactly do you sign? What is your signature? How exact? Can you show me your signature? I want to see exactly how you do it. They won't be able to do it the first time. They're gonna go like, wait, 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 what? So if you ask them like implicitly, guys, I want to make sure I get your attention. I want you to get your hands away from the keyboard and the mouse. I don't care where your hands are. As long as it's away from the keyboard and the mouse, and that's that's I, I rarely use a trick because that's usually when I see the room isn't isn't there. So when I say that, naturally their hands start to come up. They go in different places. They go like this. They go like here. But at least they're not in the keyboard. Uh, but no, if I put my hands here, people won't mirror it because it's not natural. But if I put my hands here, at least the impact I'm gonna get is like absolutely 100% of the people are listening. And if they're not. Um, I call him out for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, 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 absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, it, it just goes to show. It's funny that 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 that. Well, funny, no, but it's it. it um, what has happened is that because we ha we're in front of a camera, okay. Normally, our body language is more subdued. Mm. We don't act or we don't have gestures that would be the same the ones that we would use in in an everyday conversation uh, in our in our office you know mm -hmm. so um where where your gestures are uh, you know are more spontaneous so yes yeah, somebody i mean the other day for example somebody was telling me it was so in, it was so funny i was telling my team and we're still uh, we're still working remotely and I was giving them their feedback conversations and telling them what salary raise and what bonus they were going to get. And it was, you know, like this, no. And, um, and, and, it, and it always, I always think that I'm doing a good job. If when I tell them what their bonus is going to be, they go, yeah, you know, like that. <laughs> and she was, she was laughing because she was saying, I was saying, look, we've really had a good year. You know, your results are over a hundred percent of the objectives that you did, that you set out to get. So the, you know, the bonus of this year is going to be this so much. And she says, I, I'm, I must be doing something. Okay. When they spontaneously jump up and they say, yes. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That, that, I mean, they, they feel natural yeah. because and they feel, they feel natural. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, let's, uh, and uh, again, I'm seeing the time now. We've reached yeah. a full hour together. Is there? A, a, you look like somebody wants to say something. There's a la one last thing you want to say. No, you just you, everything that you've been saying comes around. It closes the loop, and it's saying at the end of the day, things that when we are face to face would be absolutely natural and spontaneous. All the things that don't appear natural and spontaneous in the virtual world and have to be actually planned.
you know. Yes. Yes. So, so, so a gesture that you go like this, you know, in your own office and you lay back and say, okay, gee, let me think. This is something that you usually control yourself not to do in, in front of a camera. Mm. And you actually have to plan and make sure that you do do it to yeah. appear more spontaneous and natural. You see what I mean? It's, it's, um, I think this is, um, uh, th this is this is it. Everything that you said, this is it. It's, yeah. it's it's I think for me it's down to uh, if you're either hosting and you're acting and mm -hmm. you can, you're you're kind of doing both as well. So you have to mm -hmm. think consciously as to what would I do if I was physically sitting next to that person, and then mm -hmm. and then eventually the barriers of being watched by a camera disappears and mm -hmm. the natural behaviors come back. Mm -hmm. But at first it feels forced, you know, people feel, yeah, they, 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 they don't, they don't feel it's natural. They feel, feel they, well, they feel, feel they have to sit a camera because yeah, okay. in front of a camera, I gotta be, I gotta sit up straight. I gotta look yes. at the camera. It's like, no, 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 no. It's like, forget that. Yes. You have to look at the camera for effect when you have to but you you have to have enough practice to figure out like when do i have to do that and that comes with experience but you're just setting yourself back to something more natural uh and yes you know not being slashed over and that's a, that's things <laughs> those things are logical in a normal environment as well so um uh are there any how how would you like as i would like to close but i just want you mm. let it give it i want to give you a bit of time to to close off on your side before so you're okay um i would say that touch base ask for feedback mm -hmm. uh, make sure you're on the right track uh don't second guess because um and don't make assumptions because you, you don't know so uh, it's important to to you, know, you, you need to get people to to open up Mm -hmm. cool. and to give you feedback i think that's really key mm -hmm. yeah. and and for me on my side it's it's um it's all about the uh, technicalities of your setup invest and be thoughtful about how you're setting up your environment because you're in a studio so i think it's just changing how people see it it's like you're not sitting at your desk with a camera uh, uh integrated camera and a laptop you need to invest time and money uh and thought into how you want to set up an office with the screen and the camera and how you need to be uh, gr you're only producing great outcome from virtual teams if you're a great host some sort of a great actor as well an authentic actor but you're still acting because you're forcing yourself to act in certain ways which are not natural in front of a camera so this that's that's in the way you're an actor you're not being fake it's just you're forcing yourself to behave in a way where you have to act out your thoughts and your emotions uh, in front of a camera so for me it's just hosting acting being thoughtful investing into the gear and um yeah that's that's kind of my uh in a nutshell it's, uh, it, who was it one of these famous i don't know if it was um Robert Redford, he says, it, it takes an awful good actor to appear authentic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like that. So, Diana, okay. I'm looking forward to the next talk. This was awesome. We've actually stuck within the one hour. Very close to, very <laughs> close to. And uh, we'll just chat off on